Now you covered um, you covered Northern Ireland as well, didn't you? Yes. If, very uh, confusing there. You have to be it's very, very careful. It's very confusing. <laughs> I, I, obviously, because of where I am, you know, where I come from uh, originally, that part of the that world, I'm kind island. of, yeah, that wee place. I'm kind of familiar with the political thinking behind that. But the one thing I was always struck with in Northern Ireland was that there is a lot of organised crime involved when these guys are, you know, when this stuff is going on. Yes. Is, there, is there criminal activity amongst these oh, insurgents? Yeah. Is it? There definitely is. And um, for example, in Mosul, the police station, the, or the whole police force was decimated in November last year. Right. And the local police are very vulnerable because of criminal gangs, you know, links to their families. There's family ties, there's ethnic ties, there's business ties, there's everything. And so that plays a big part in it. And the other thing that's very common from Northern Ireland is the way that they target people. You know, right. they'll have a guy on the street on his cell phone or a kid. You'll see the kids on the street looking around the corner and they'll phone someone. And that's how they get, like, the judge that was killed, you know, right. although he was outside his house, but how they target ministers on their way to work. Why, why do you think you're drawn to going into such dangerous places? Why, why do you do that? You know, it's so... There's some, well, there's two reasons, really. It's very rewarding to... Um, to be taken sort of to the extremes of human existence and know that you can survive, you can conquer that, you can do that. Yeah. And then, you know, added to that is the fact that you really have a reason for doing it. And that's because you, I believe in getting that story out there. I believe in seeing it for myself. I mean, I believe in what the... Yeah, yeah. How much... Thank you. How much, pressure is, how much pressure is on you as a journalist? Because you're in some very sensitive political ground now. Do you receive any pressure from either the folks here at CBS or anyone else to tell the story in a certain way, to phrase things in a certain way? Does anyone ever do that to you? Well, that's why I like war, because they're usually so grateful that you're there, that nobody right. messes with your script. Really? <laughs> Well, isn't it? There was another network, uh, not CBS, but there was no, another network. No, not that, CBS. There was no. no. <laughs> Don't bite the hand that feeds you. <laughs> That's right. No, the, uh, there was another network where they weren't. They stopped using the word insurgent and started using the word terrorist. They, you know, they they were the careful word. about yeah. using. I don't know what network it was. I think it was <coughs> Fox. But they, uh, <laughs> I, for, for legal reasons, I would never say that. But. Um, <laughs> Do, do you, you don't get any of that. You, you just no. straight your stuff. That's how that's how it goes. No, and actually, you know, the great thing about sixty minutes. I don't know if you didn't see the whole piece, but what's really important to us is that you're supposed to be able to make up your own mind. I mean, it's really a failing of of journalism if you if you only present one side of it. You know, you have a responsibility to do that. What happens though if you're in a situation where you're 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 in there with guys who are you know young men in very dangerous situations who. Um, you know, it, what if you're taking a stance which is slightly not in their favour? If you're given a report which doesn't actually put them in, in a good light, you know, and they've got the guns and they're kind of protecting you in a way. You just have to roll with that. Really? Yeah, sure. And they're okay with that? Yeah, most of the time. Yeah? I mean, not always, you know, they can screw you for your next story and not let you in and that kind of thing. Right, but that's, that's as far as, no one actually would get in your face and say, I'm, would they? Oh, yeah. Oh, Are they you will? kidding? I think I said to one of the Navy SEALs, I did a piece about US Navy SEALs in Afghanistan, which actually the SEALs have never allowed any journalists to go with them into right. combat before, so that was quite amazing. But one of the guys was moaning at me about the media this and the media that, and eventually I said to him, you know, I was in the Hotel Palestine when it was shelled by an American tank, and I helped to clean the blood off my friend's, you know, things who, when he, who was killed, and I spent hours in a hospital while my other friend, we didn't know if he was going to live or not. I'm not holding you and every other soldier out there responsible for that. The mm -hmm. media makes mistakes. I can only be accountable for what I do. Fair enough. We've got to take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk to you some more. Lara Logan, everybody. Back, my lovelies, we are here with Lara Logan. Now, I was talking to you about being out there in uh, scary um, Iraq, which yeah. is too scary for me. I would never go there. <laughs> do you ever, you know, do you ever, when you put yourself in a, in a dangerous situation, how do you, how do you take care of yourself? Do you, do you ever carry a gun? Do you ever? I know you oh are. no, you would never carry a weapon as a journalist. I mean, if you, I, I don't, I would carry <laughs> a gun if I was there. I'd, I'd, Actually, a lot of the soldiers ask me that. They're like, you don't have a weapon? You don't want one? You, you don't want one? Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. like, no, thanks. I'm more dangerous with one than without, I think. <laughs> That's the whole idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But no, what you, what you would, you know, the, what's different today is that the media are targets, especially in a place like Iraq. That's what I mean. Yeah, and that's, 
that's particularly scary because it's not like random gunfire or being in the wrong place at the wrong time when the Americans drop a JDAM, you know, that's not that kind of thing. Um, orange is not my color, according to my sister, so I wouldn't look good in one of those jumpsuits on the internet before they saw my head off. I swear to God, you don't, don't do that. Now, do not end up <laughs> like that. You know, I, I, what's the, uh, I know you're married, right? What's, what does your husband feel about you going into this? Kind of, does he go with you? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> No, no, no. He's he's um, he's just under seven foot. So he his complaint is that he would really stand out. Yeah, it's not a chance he wants to take. I could imagine in Iraq, he probably a seven foot guy would he would stand out. Well, you have to be really careful, you know, especially these days. You don't want to do anything stupid. And I really, I mean, jokes aside, I really don't want to end up as a target. But what worries me about it is that, you know. It used to be that you could go to both sides of the war right. and report both sides of the story. To, you know, to set up a meeting with an insurgent these days is almost tantamount to signing your death warrant. Now, when did that change? What happened? When, when did journalists Daniel become... Pearl. Daniel Pearl. That's Daniel when it changed. Pearl. I think that was a... You know, it happened before, um, but it was arbitrary. And I think it, it became part of... I mean, for example, we have nothing to offer these people because they're not trying to reach people in our society. Right. There's no message of theirs that we need to carry for them. And they have the internet. So, you know, they have everything that they need to get their message out. They don't need us. Do you ever think when you're, when you're under fire in these places that maybe, you know, you'd like to do something like Martha Stewart living or... Uh, <laughs> do you get bored when you're back here for too long? Just anaesthetize me right now, make oh, really? it a painless death. No, no, I don't think about that at no? all. No? You don't think about it at all? No, I mean, I, you know, I interviewed Richard Gere once. That was, that was a good story. Too. That could be frightening. <laughs> that could be very frightening. Did he go on about the Dalai Lama or anything? Actually, we talked so much about Kosovo and Buddhism that the showbiz people back at my show were furious. They couldn't have any clips that they could use. <laughs> they listen, said, I could never do another showbiz piece for them again. Well, listen, if you're going to go back there, will you be careful? Please be careful. We'd like to have you back on the show. Look after yourself, all right? <laughs> Lara Logan, everybody. Lara's reports here regularly on 60 Minutes Wednesday. We'll be right back.